The 6 o'clock news starts right now. Among the rights afforded anyone arrested is the right to legal counsel. If they can't afford a lawyer, one will be appointed. Paul Venema with a look at an attorney review committee established to make sure defendants are getting proper representation from court appointed attorneys. If you were in jail or on trial represented by a court appointed attorney that you weren't satisfied with, there was little you could do. There's never been a venue where somebody could complain directly about an attorney um, without going to the state bar of Texas. That is until now. Judge Ron Runhell heads a seven-member attorney review committee made up of three district court judges and four defense attorneys. When a person is arrested, they're given a card with a phone number on it and told how to reach the committee. As soon as we get that contact, then the attorney review committee sets it up. We look at that particular attorney, we analyze how to deal with it, and then we take it from there. That could include everything from counseling to recommending disciplinary action from the Bar Association. The idea is to prevent cases like former attorney Mark Benavides. He was convicted and sentenced to 80 years in prison for forcing clients to have sex in exchange for his legal representation. If a situation like the Mark Benavides um, occasion occurs, we're aware of it, we know about it, and we can immediately do something. Ron Hell said that the committee is designed to make sure that the public, who pays for court-appointed attorneys, get what they're paying for, and defendants' rights are protected. We want to make sure that our court-appointed attorneys um, have transparency, uh, that they feel confident that, that we are behind them. Paul Venema, KSAT 12 News. 57 years ago today, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stood on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial and delivered his I Have a Dream speech, pushing for racial equity. Today, tens of thousands of marchers return to that same place with the message that that dream has yet to be fully realized. Devin Clark shows us the demonstration in Washington and explains how you can continue that mission right here in San Antonio. We will fulfill my grandfather. Dream. Today, the voice of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s granddaughter rang out. In the same place, the civil rights icon delivered his I Have a Dream speech exactly 57 years ago. Since the legendary moment in 1963, perceived racial injustices against people of color like George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and most recently Jacob Blake have continued the cries for equity. If we look at all of the shootings that we have of African-American males, we look at placing a knee on George Floyd's neck. That was a lynching. It's time to get your knee off our neck. Under the theme, get your knee off our necks, some 70,000 marchers traveled from the Lincoln Memorial to the Martin Luther King Jr. Monument, condemning ongoing racial injustices. Change has to happen now. And that's what we're here for, because we know that if it doesn't change now, I mean, when will it change? Notable figures like Reverend Al Sharpton. Black lives matter. And Martin Luther King Jr.'s son, MLK III, also withstood the heat and put pandemic fears aside, speaking out at the demonstration. Back here at home, the president of the local chapter of the NAACP, Dr. Gregory Hudspeth, making his voice heard. We understand now, as we see those same issues happening again today, that that is a dream that is deferred. That is, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. And the march in Washington wrapped up around 3 o'clock today, but the NAACP here in San Antonio is inviting people from the community to help the organization continue the mission. We have information on how you can do that right now on KSAT.com. Reporting on the east side, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. The San Antonio police arresting a man they say was smoking pot on the Riverwalk, carrying cash and a gun. Park police say they came across the guy around 7 a.m. near Commerce Street. When the officer approached the man, he took off. Police say the officer pursued him but called for backup when they say it looked like that suspect was reaching for a weapon in his pants. Officers caught up to the suspect on the street level on West Commerce near Bowie. That's when they say they found the cash and the gun. San Antonio police meantime looking for some help tracking down a couple of suspects. They say carjacked a woman in a convenience store parking lot on the northeast side of town. It happened Monday at the Circle K in the 15,000 block of Judson Road. According to police, two men approached a woman as she was getting into her car. They pointed a gun at her and demanded the keys. They then got away. The victim was not hurt. Crime Stoppers is offering up to $5,000 for information that leads to their arrest. Call 210-224-STOP.
New at six, even after school districts start phasing in students back on campus, distance learning will remain a fact of life for many of them. But what about those who perhaps were already at risk of dropping out of school? Jesse DeGriotta reports the author of a new study says learning online still needs to have that personal touch. We expect that we're going to see widening of the achievement gap. Not encouraging but the prediction is based on its newest distance learning study. The UTSA Urban Education Institute found of the nearly 300 students surveyed, 64% learned less, 25% about the same. Only 11% said they'd learned more. Unknown yet, he says, is how many were already struggling in the classroom, further compounded by their parents losing their jobs in the pandemic. 26% reported some weeks their families had no money for food. That, that, is, that is a big concern. Villarreal says it's now even more vital for teachers to do what they always did in the classroom. Whether it's through technology or in person, that's an essential component. Much like what he says CAST schools, the Centers for Applied Science and Technology, were already doing before school districts closed their campuses. Still to come, he says, are more studies of distance learning's impact on the dropout rate. But also the percent of students who are cutting back their ambitions of going to college, continuing their education towards a higher degree. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. To find out what worked and didn't work do during distance learning, there's a link to that and more in the study on our website, ksat.com. More than 1,000 backpacks, 500 boxes of food, all distributed tomorrow on the city's east side. It's all in honor of a woman known as Mama Boone, who devoted her life to caring for those who were less fortunate. Verna May Mama Boone passed away more than 10 years ago, but today her son, Reverend James Robinson, is continuing her legacy by giving back to his community. Reverend Robinson organized the backpack and food drive with the help of HEB and the San Antonio Food Bank. It's all in tribute to his mother, who he says never grew tired of helping people. It's very important to keep it going and just let let the city know uh, that mama is not forgotten. So we're going to continue uh, blessing the community just uh, as if she was still here. Tomorrow's event starts at 10 a.m. and runs until supplies last. It's happening at 1211 West Hind Road, which is off of Martin Luther King Drive. In order to receive supplies, though, you must call the San Antonio Food Bank to register first. That number is 210-431-8326. Hey, time saver traffic right now. Let's go to I-37 at Houston, not far from downtown. And you can see things moving along very smoothly. Not far from downtown, it is downtown. <laughs> uh, I don't know, it's a Friday. The COVID-19 pandemic has triggered a crisis within a crisis, a mental health emergency. Compared to a 2018 survey, adults in the U.S. are now eight times more likely to feel serious mental distress. Ursula Perry reports researchers are taking a hard look at what works and what doesn't when it comes to helping those suffering from depression and anxiety. Your health, your job, your spouse, your kids. Ah! On a normal day, any and all of these can stress you out. Add in a global pandemic and the pressure is sending more than one third of Americans into a state of clinical depression and overwhelming anxiety. For me, it was having no energy, no motivation, um, always just trapped inside my head. But what do you do if medication doesn't work? New research shows only 40% of patients respond to the first antidepressant they try. Scientists from McGill University have found a protein in the blood and the brain called GPR56. It dramatically changes in people who respond to antidepressants. By using a simple blood test, doctors can quickly find out if antidepressants will work on you. you. Actually stretch your fingers. Meanwhile, Stanford researchers are testing a new version of magnetic brain stimulation, an FDA-approved treatment that sends magnetic pulses to the brain. It's called SAINT, or Stanford Accelerated Intelligent Neuromodulation Therapy. Because if you keep that hope and you, and you make it through, you'll see that a lot of what your brain is telling you is a lie. And new research into artificial intelligence at UT Southwestern is underway. It actually could help you choose which antidepressant would work best for your body. 
It's promising news in the middle of a pandemic. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. Look outside with live cam. Sure, we're looking at the picture, but in the corner of your screen. I know. That's what's drawing my eye. 103 out there, Adam? Yeah, pretty wicked today. The humidity really didn't fall off much, which is rare. Usually we see the humidity drop quite a bit in the afternoon. That didn't happen today, and it's going to be the same way all the way through the weekend. So get ready for more of this hot and sticky weather. The aquifer taking another hit today, down six tenths of a foot. We're about two and a half feet below the August average. Mold, fall elm, and ragweed all on the low end. 400 is the count for mold, 70 for ragweed. Taking a look at temperatures, 104 Helotus, 101 Stinson, 104 in Castorville. We're at and above 100 pretty much everywhere on the map. Mostly clear this evening, humid, sticky, and temperatures gradually making their way through the 90s, settling near 80 by tomorrow morning. Get ready for more heat and humidity through the weekend with high heat index values. We'll talk about that in our next chance of rain. Coming right up. We are waiting for the daily update from the mayor and the county judge on the latest coronavirus information and perhaps more on the evacuees, how many we ended up with and what they'll be doing. Let's go live now. And 72 new cases of COVID-19, which brings our total to 46,083 in our community since the pandemic began. Our seven day moving average is up slightly to 152. And so this is a stark reminder to make sure that we do not let our guard down, especially as we're getting closer to Labor Day and schools opening. Uh, we do unfortunately have uh, 13 new deaths to report tonight, bringing our total to 780 confirmed and verified deaths related to COVID-19. Seven of the 13 are the result of Metro Health reviewing death certificates provided by the state and confirming the deaths were indeed COVID-19 related, and those occurred between July 2nd and August 24th. Over in our hospitals, for the first time since June, we are below 400 hospitalizations. There are 393 hosp people in the hospital tonight, 49 new uh, admissions since yesterday, 196 uh, in the ICU, and 125 on ventilators. And keep in mind, uh, especially with those deaths that were reported tonight, and those folks who are fighting for their lives on, in the ICU and on ventilators, these are people's mothers, fathers, brothers, sons, daughters. Please keep them in your prayers. We have 62% of ventilators available, 14% of staffed hospital beds available, and the overall hospital system remains under high stress, but we are slowly moving in the right direction. Let me turn it over to Judge Wolf. Yeah, thanks, Mayor, and I'm really optimistic about what's happening with the hospitals. Um, we know that's current. We know that there's not any backlog on deaths, no backlogs on testing. This is current. And so, to me, that's a good indicator that uh, we are clearly moving in the right direction. And to see that uh, numbers go down before below 400 when we were as high as 1,267, that's, a, that, 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 that's, that's just great, great, great news. But as we all know, uh, we have to keep up our vigilance and make sure that we're doing everything else to protect ourselves as well as others. And there's some interesting things for you to think about as you go about doing that. Uh, the factors that affect this spread of disease are, are different. Uh, and it could be the air circulation within a building. It could be the ventilation in the building that may not be proper. And the time that you are around someone, usually it's somewhere about 10 to 15 minutes uh, in terms of it spreading to you. How much of a crowd uh, uh, density do you have? And are people that you're with uh, wearing a face mask? And uh, the other thing I think to be alert about is this person quiet that you're with? Is he speaking softly to you? Or is he shouting and singing? If he's shouting or singing, you better get a lot further away than six feet. It's shown that uh, when they had that choir practice in Washington State early on, that, uh, <laughs> that it traveled as far as 45 feet when you're out singing. So keep these things in mind as you um, work hard to protect yourself as, uh, as well as those around each other. And, and again, we touched on it just briefly time before last. We're into flu season coming up. Uh, it's important that you get your um, flu test because of the, the flu is a different animal than what the um, COVID, 
COVID-19 is. They spread in different ways. Uh, they uh, uh, last maybe in different longer times in your, in your body. And so while we have both of these coming at us, as we come into the uh, fall of the year, it's going to really be important that you get your shots and that we continue to use the face mask. And if we do that, if we do that, uh, we could get through this flu season without another big outbreak of people passing away either from the flu or from virus. And we've shown that can happen in the Southern Hemisphere if people will continue to do the things that we ask you to do, the face mask, at least six feet away from each other, sanitation, stay away from inside density of crowds. So let's hang with it and let's keep these numbers going in the right direction. All right. Thank you, Judge. And now that the evacuation orders have been lifted in the Gulf Coast region, we want to thank all the volunteers and local residents here in San Antonio for stepping up and helping the Red Cross and, and really helping us ensure that nearly 5,000 of those evacuees uh, made it here safely and were treated well. Uh, and as they depart back to their homes, uh, know that we're with you uh, and we will continue to help our neighbors on the Gulf Coast as they get back. All right, the mayor there talking about those thousands of evacuees we touched on earlier this week uh, who evacuated their homes because of Hurricane Laura. Hopefully a lot of them able to return home safely. Meantime, this evening, 272 new COVID-19 cases reported today. That's an uptick from the daily reports that we have seen uh, over the last several days or so. Also an uptick in that seven day rolling average we keep watching, which right now stands at 152 cases on average per 24 hours. The judge there saying that everyone needs to just continue those precautionary measures that we have all grown very accustomed to at this point. Yeah, because clearly what we're doing is working right now for the first time in quite some time. There are less than 400 people in area hospitals with COVID-19. That is good news, uh, but the hospital system continues to be under stress. So trending in the right direction. Let's keep it going. All right. Meanwhile, not trending in the right direction. Unless you love 103 degree days, our weather. Yeah, and not just 103. You know, we actually made it up to 104 for the high. We just wow. got the updated climate summary. 104 for the high. Not only that, but very sticky and humid out there as well. So the heat indices at times were up to 110 here in San Antonio throughout the day today. Del Rio, new record high temperature, making it up to 108. Even Rock Springs, 100 degrees for the high. Fredericksburg. 101. I mean, we were at or above 100 everywhere in South Texas, and this is going to continue through the weekend. Let's take a look at our current rating 103 at the airport. Dew point is 65, so the relative humidity is only 29%. Doesn't sound very high, but it's that dew point that's 65, and that really makes it feel a lot hotter out there. So it feels like it's 107 right now at this 6 o'clock hour. So we're still feeling that thick humidity combined with the heat. Right now, 104 Carrizo Springs, Catula 105, New Braunfels 106 at this hour, and Del Rio 107. Now, when you factor in the humidity, we have some heat indices out there at or above 110. I mean, Del Rio, Gonzales feeling like 111, Pleasanton, New Braunfels feels like 110. That's going to continue through the weekend. Air temperatures will still be a little above 100, but when you factor in the humidity, it's going to feel like it's anywhere from 106 to 112 over the weekend. Then next week, a little shift in our weather pattern should trim back the temperatures a little bit closer to 97 by the middle part of next week with a glimmer of hope for some rain. So it's more of the same Saturday and Sunday. Hot, very humid, heat index values up to 112 at times. And then into next week, we do see some rain chances by Wednesday right now looking isolated, but there is the potential that we could be increasing those rain chances in the days ahead. We'll keep you updated. I'm stuck on 112. <laughs> Something about 112. Yeah, <laughs> not good. Thanks, Adam. You know, it's Friday night. It is high school football season begins and usually there's a buzz in the sports department, but we have like most of our producers and photographers working remotely. So yeah. I mean, the only afternoon buzz was Greg Simmons getting his nap. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm yes. kidding. And then I'm he kidding. came Greg back all really hot and from Lavernia. He's in Lavernia. Yeah. I know he's working hard. Yeah, just... he came back all hot and sweaty. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm inside the studio. I'm usually out on the road for the BGC road trip, but so far I'm just going to hang back here. BGC road trip, two games, Poth and Lytle plus Bloomington facing Nixon Smile. And speaking of BGC, the Batman Billies started off the season with a win last night. Their O-line did a fantastic job coming up. It is.
is Pirates versus Pirates when Lytle visits Poth tonight as part of our big game coverage road trip. Lytle went 1-9 last season while playing six sophomores, so that can only make them better this season. On the flip side, Poth went 11-2, advancing to the third round of the Class 3A Division II playoffs. Tonight is the first game of what Poth hopes is a championship season. We're always looking to go further than we did the year before. We've got a lot of guys coming back, like you said, and we're all, we've all got the confidence to go to the next round and beyond this year. We're always looking to go more than we did last year, and that's going to be a, that's what we're going to do. We're going to fight, and we're going to play more football than we did last year. The community was really excited. You know, every year we've made a little jump in our in our program. We started eight and three, went nine and two, ten and two. Last year was eleven and two. Felt like we could have played another week or two. Um, and uh, we got we got some really good kids back. Uh, our senior class is not real big, but they got really really good quality football players in there. Game two on the BGC road trip will see the Bloomington Bobcats at the Nixon Smiley Mustangs. The Bobcats driving some 90 minutes to open their season with the Stangs. Nixon Smiley plays in 15 3A Division II. They have 23 returning players from a squad that went 4 and 7 overall last season, making it to the first round of the playoffs. Getting some postseason play has the Mustangs fired up for this season. We got a lot of returning lettermen, so we're excited about coming back this year. And we're hoping that leadership from those third year returning Letterman, you know, those, they were sophomores several years ago, they're seniors this year. So, you know, getting into the playoffs last year, got, got, got us some good experience. So we're, we're excited about this year. If we can stay on it, we'll be, we're going to be okay. I'm going 0 and 10 sophomore year and then uh, come uh, 4 and 6 and going to the playoffs. But um, I feel like this year will be uh, two rounds, three rounds deep. It was good. We had a lot of, we had a, a lot of young guys last year that I feel that since, since they got that, that playoff experience and that, that varsity experience, they're able to come out this year and, and uh, do well and uh, produce for us. Check out the map of our road trip tonight. Lytle and Poth and Bloomington and Nixon Smiley. Two of the 12 games were scheduled to catch to get for you, so catch the highlights on the night beat and biggamecoverage.com. The yeah, Batland Billies bad. of Fredericksburg yeah, opened up the season for the entire area yeah. last night, driving some yeah. two-plus hours to San Angelo yeah. to play Monahans, and the yeah. Batland Billies put on a show. They scored on the game's opening drive, and the Billies never looked back with an impressive 55-20 victory. Head coach Lance Moffat praised his offensive line for winning the battle up front. They did a great job. They got after it, uh, and, and they've been playing hard. They played a great game last week uh, in the scrimmage, and, and, and they're kind of dominating up front, and they certainly did that tonight. Coach said the Batlin Billies were going to Whataburger for their postgame meal, which is their go-to. How about a special shout-out for 1972 Natalia graduate Trudy Smith, seen here with her husband Sam and her grandchildren Braylon and Branson Smith. Natalia has a big game at Durnton tonight, but Mrs. Smith will not be there because she's in a hospital after being diagnosed with chronic lung disease and pancreatic cancer. Her son Eric told us this would be just the fourth or fifth football game she's missed since the 1970s. Yesterday was her 67th birthday and the school presented her with a football and volleyball signed by Natalia student athletes. Eric said that gesture made her day and Texas State football added a road game to its upcoming schedule. The Bobcats will play at Boston College on September 26 in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. The addition of the Boston College contest will be one of 12 football games for the Bobcats in 2020. Guys, I love the gesture of a volleyball and a football, yes. right? You see that smile? Yeah, that Only was awesome. Only the fourth game she's missed. Fourth or fifth, yes. That's impressive. It is. Thanks, Larry. Thank you, Larry. You've got it. Our case had Q&A is coming up next. It's time for our KSAT Q&A where we can dive a little deeper into some of the issues and the subjects that people are facing these days. And one of them, of course, coronavirus and the pandemic and a lot of local businesses. We're joined by Pearl Flores, who is a member of the San Antonio Food Truck Association. She owns the food truck Grouchy Mamas. Did I say that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Talk about the pandemic and the effect it's had on the food truck industry. Well, it's truly devastating. It's taking away a lot of our lunch spots that we had. A lot of them had to cancel because they've gone from working at home. So with that, we've lost a lot of that. We've lost big events, lots of the big events, Fiesta, um, anything you did for Oktoberfest, all of that has already been canceled. So it's been pretty rough. 
have businesses, no matter what the industry is, have all had to adapt in order to survive all of this. So how has your business had to make changes in order to try to stay in business during all of this? Um, we started doing more neighborhoods, more HOAs and everything. They were bringing out trucks more to give everybody a chance to make money. And, you know, some of these places are kind of far, so you don't really see restaurants for like miles. So it was convenient. Talk also about some new uh, restrictions that have been put in place and there are some new rules when it comes to bars and how they can reopen if they serve food. So are bars partnering with food trucks so they can reopen and make that happen? Yes, you can reopen if you if the bar pulls an FB license, which is the food and beverage license, and they can pair up with the food truck to be able to do that. The food truck has to have a certain amount of sales to the bar sales to be able to do that. But that's hope. That's hope. But the bars also are going to have to push the issue that the food has to be bought because without them, they can't open. Right. Because they're, they're considered restaurant right now with the food and beverage. And, and the food truck industry itself is already a unique one. You know, it's something that is certainly mobile. It's not something that is a, a brick and mortar location. So you don't have patrons going inside an establishment. Has that been an advantage at all when you're talking about customers who are concerned about COVID-19 and perhaps want to be able to get their favorite foods, want to be able to have a moment out of the house and be social, but they don't want to be uh, somewhere inside and confined with others? Yes. I mean, you can find the food trucks. You can look up any food truck that you like. And most of them are doing contactless um, service, which is most of us use Square. So they have a little thing where you just put your card in there and it reads and you don't ever have to touch money, do anything and they place orders ahead of time. So a lot of us have adapted to those things. Is there a website? I mean, can we go to the San Antonio Food Truck Association website and find out where a particular food truck is going to be? Or, I mean, is there is there a, a, a sense of community that's kind of come together to help each other out through this? Um, you can go to the Food Truck Association website. The members are the only ones that will show up there. And there's tons of food trucks, obviously. And there's other sites that are doing where they're promoting the food trucks. So you just follow your food trucks and they'll be able to post. They post their schedules and you'll be able to see where they're going to be for the week and stuff. What is your business right now compared to what it was before, let's say, March? Oof. I've probably lost 80 percent. Wow. Are there other businesses that aren't able, that haven't been able to survive? Yes. Some people are starting to um, see the effects really bad and they're starting to sell their businesses right now. Wow. Just another effect of this pandemic. Uh, certainly one that so many are still waiting through all the challenges of. And we appreciate your time and, and taking oh, the time you. to explain some of the obstacles that you're still facing and still trying to overcome. Pearl Flores, owner of Grouchy Mama's Food Truck and board member of the San Antonio Food Truck Association. Thanks so much for being with us. Hey, Pearl, before you go, I, I, I mean, we talk about buy local, with, you know, help local restaurants, things like that. Are you going to be any place particular? Is Grouchy Mama's going to be anywhere in particular this weekend? Um, this weekend, we are in a, a private HOA, which is a gated community. Next week, we took the week off because of Labor Day. But there's plenty of trucks out there that are probably still working because um a lot of them that's what they that's all they really have is just their business so go to I am your, fortunate go ahead enough to have my husband who is retired military and everything so we were able to survive because of that through yeah. a lot of stuff but so, a lot of people don't have that same option so go to the san antonio food truck association website find your food truck that interests you and support it yes and also i run a a page on Facebook, which is called um, Dude, Where's My Food Truck? And a lot of food truck members <laughs> post their schedules, where they're going to be, what time they're going to be open. And so we've been trying to push that to help support the food trucks to get their names out there, show their schedules and see what they're where they're working at so that people can support.
Pearl food, where's my food truck? We got to repeat that again. Not that I think that's I love that someone title. will forget. Yeah. An easy look up on Facebook. Pearl, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Y'all have a great evening. You too. You too. We'll be right back. The recovery effort just getting started after Laura's hammering of Louisiana and parts of Texas. Today, our KSAC community partners are holding a Hurricane Laura relief phone bank with the American Red Cross to help them in their mission to assist people trying to return to normal after disaster strikes. The number to call to make a monetary donation, 1-855-678-4433. The phone bank will be open until 11 o'clock tonight. The Red Cross also looking for volunteers. If you're interested in donating your time, we have information on how to do that at KSAT.com. Live look outside with city cam this evening. The sun shining bright. We're feeling it 103 degrees. That's not as hot as it got today. Adam. I know 104 was our high temperature here in San Antonio and Del Rio actually set a record today, making it up to 108. 103 right now by 10 p.m. We'll still be at 90 degrees. Thereafter, we'll finally drop down into the 80s and tomorrow morning starting the day right near 80 degrees, but more heat and thick humidity through the weekend. Then a change in our weather pattern with a glimmer of hope for rain. I'll tell you all about it coming up. Just as Sony was hoping, the buzz for PlayStation 5 is high. A lot of people want it. Registration to get one when it comes out is now open, but actually getting one might be based on luck. Pre-order sign-up is limited to existing customers in the U.S. Users have to sign up online with their PlayStation ID. That doesn't mean you made the list, though. Sony is sending emails to specific users based on their previous interests in PlayStation activities. You have to be worthy. Yes, so. Yeah. If selected, it's a first come, first serve basis for a limited time only. Sony hasn't said how much the PlayStation 5 will cost or when it will be released. Key details. Yeah, right? kind of. Yeah. Restaurants across the country have been expanding outdoor seating to keep customers a little safer from COVID 19. It's been fine, it's summer. But the nice weather is going to come to an end for some sooner than others, of course. The city of Chicago is trying to get in front of this pandemic problem with a contest for the locals there. It's called Chicago's Winter Design Challenge. The Windy City offering $5,000 to anyone who can come up with a brilliant idea to make eating outside a little more pleasant when the temperatures drop. Indoor seating is capped at 25% capacity. Forget thinking about blankets and heat lamps and greenery. They're not going to be winners. OK, the Illinois Restaurant Association says they've got that covered. The best plan is going to be something no one has thought of yet. OK, heated seats, heated seats. That's a cheap. That's a cheap option. Heated right? forks, heated forks. <laughs> After this week, no one would blame you if you wanted a glass of wine. You can make it a red for National Red Wine Day, which is not the same thing, Adam, as National Drink Wine Day. That's oh, different. Goodness. That's in February. Wow. Whole nother day. And March and April. <laughs> the ways to celebrate seem pretty obvious. Maybe a nice Cabernet Sauvignon. Yeah, it comes from the most widely planted grape in the world. California's version of the grape is said to be fruit forward. France's variety has a more spicy herbal flavor. Ah. Next in popularity is Merlot, found in both warm and cool climates. Zinfandel can vary a lot by the region where the grapes are grown. And Pinot Noir, which had its own day about 10 days ago. Oh, just missed it. Of course it did. Pinot now, Thursday. If it was, it you was. know, <laughs> brew your own beer day. That that's all that's every cast. day for Caskey. I've got some fermenting right now in the closet in the yeah. it, dungeon sorry, of a closet. Fermenting in a closet? Yeah, oh, it he, makes it, he makes that it sound like delicious. Bad sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> it's fermenting in a closet yeah, right because it's dark. Like, there's no yeah. sunlight and it's yeah. cooler in the closet. Laundry you want it in a cool. About. It's totally airlocked. It's only got carbon dioxide it's spewing out carbon dioxide. It's good stuff. Bubbles it out a little bit. And Myra does make a good point, though, because, you know, it does fermenting in your closet does kind of sound like your socks when you're in high <laughs> no, school. No, it's great Old because our coat closet smells like hops. It's amazing. I love it. My wife, not so much, but I think it's fantastic. Yeah, that's it's great. That's kind of what I thought. Oh, she makes fun of me because I get up in the morning and, and talk to my beer as it's fermenting. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, honey, how are you doing, too? Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at our almanac data today. 104. I need a hoppy. 
<laughs> 104. That was our high temperature today. The average being 95, not a record breaker here in San Antonio. We'd have to get much warmer. We'd have to get up to 110 in order to hit the record. So we were far from that, but nonetheless, still a hot and sticky, steamy day. Look at that dew point is 65. So despite an air temperature of 103, it feels like 107 in San Antonio. Catula, temperature of 105. Del Rio, 107. New Braunfels, 106. But when you factor in the humidity, because these dew points are well into the 60s, of course it feels hotter. Feels like 110 New Braunfels in Gonzales. Feels like 111 right now in Del Rio. And this trend is going to last all the way through the weekend and into next week. We'll see a little shift in our weather pattern that should trim back temperatures a little bit by Wednesday and also offer a glimmer of hope for some rainfall. Parts of East Texas and even bearing in on Houston, they have some heavy downpours out there. But for us, we don't have any activity and the remnants of Hurricane Laura now just a remnant low pressure system moving into Kentucky, pushing eastward and bringing all that good juicy rainfall along with it away from our neck of the woods. We have the upper level high, the big blue H. It's in charge right now, but it's not going to last a whole lot longer. It's going to break down and weaken quite a bit in the coming days. You're still going to feel the intense heat and humidity through the weekend, but by next week it moves to the west coast. That opens the door for some disturbances and it looks like we'll have just that by Wednesday, giving us a chance of some rainfall, maybe some widely separated showers. Right now we have it at about a 30% chance, but if trends continue, we'll be increasing that rain chance. I'm gaining some confidence in this situation. I like this shift in the weather pattern that we're seeing. 79 tomorrow morning. It's very humid in the morning. We're talking dew points in the mid 70s to start the day. By the afternoon, we'll back up to 103, but it's going to feel like it's anywhere from 106 to 112. Then we repeat it and do it all over again on Sunday. Pretty much the exact same with a lot of sunshine. Next week, near 100 Monday and Tuesday. And then by Wednesday, we have that shot, that hope for a little bit of rainfall. It's not a huge chance yet, but again, we could be increasing those odds in the days ahead. So we'll keep you updated. A cool 97. Ah, refreshing. Mm, in case you missed it, coming up next. Here's today's I See Why Am I. Now to an update on the 2007 murder of Blaze Wright. Charges have now been dropped against one of the three people allegedly connected to the crime. Michael Carroll Jr. was arrested last week on a capital murder charge. Bear County court records show that charge has since been dismissed pending further investigation. Wright was shot and killed during a robbery at his Universal City apartment back in February of 2007. The alleged getaway driver, Laura Selders, and alleged trigger man, Joseph Selders, their charges have not been dropped. It is the first full Friday night high school football night in San Antonio and South Texas will not look the same in 2020 starting tonight. Yeah, that's because most of the powerhouse schools like Judson Steel, Brandeis Johnson still on the sidelines due to COVID-19. 19's pandemic. It's until late next month they can start and those schools that are being allowed to play their games will look much different due to health and safety protocols put in place by the University Interscholastic League. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf calling for a review of the fatal shooting of a 31 year old man. Damian Lamar Daniels was shot and killed by Bear County Sheriff's deputy on Tuesday. It was during a mental health call. Judge Wolf asking the mental health department to review the case and recommend recommend changes in policy. Immediately, I just thought we got to help those people because I know they're hurting and I know that they need help. Local leaders doing what they can to help the evacuees today. Hundreds of care bags containing food, masks, hand sanitizer, toiletries, and as well as a $25 gift card all donated to evacuees. All day long, KSAT, along with our community partners, has been holding a phone bank to help raise money for the Red Cross, which is mobilized for Hurricane Laura relief. Disasters like Laura are the reason an organization like the Red Cross even exists, but they need help so they can then help others. The number to call is 1-855-678-4483 to make a monetary donation. 
The phone bank will be running through the night beat tonight, wrapping up at 11 o'clock. And if you'd like to donate your time, that is needed too. The Red Cross can use volunteers. We have information on how you can sign up on ksatcommunity.com. So, by the way, Adam. Yes. Okay, I'm listening. All ears. It's not only National Red Wine Day. Uh -huh. It's also Myra's birthday. No. Oh, yes. Oh, I had no idea. Oh, happy birthday, Myra. This thank is great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. Well, happy birthday. Nothing like 104 degrees, right? It's a candle yeah, out just, there for you. Yes, what I am. We're just one big candle here in San Antonio, <laughs> burning hot. Tomorrow morning, that's the map, will be in the upper 70s near 80 by the afternoon. We're above 100, 100 pretty much everywhere. Even Timberwood Park, Bernie 101, Von Army as well. So get ready for more heat and humidity. All right, thanks, Adam. And thanks for watching the news at 6. See you at 10.